So that is no. Okay. Well, because there's no common law marriage unless she's dead. That's that's so, not true. There's uh, actually a that 19... That's not a valid issue for why we're here today. And since there is currently a default against you and you haven't filed a motion to amend the parenting petition and allege some type of marriage and divorce or annulment grounds, we're a little late to be discussing that. So you're, that is not an issue I'm going to put on for trial management. Your you're Honor, I, I, I'd like to... You're wrong. You have the ability to cite whatever portions of 458C that you believe requires the court to include a calculation of assets somehow in the calculation of child support. I have not seen that you have done so at this late hour. So that is not an issue that I'm going to be putting on the trial management conference form. Is there any other issue, sir? Your Honor, I object to what you're saying. I'd like to keep an accurate record. There are laws from 1946 and 55 that state that assets are to be considered. I can give the court those specific RSAs, including a three-year... Well, sir, I tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and file a motion to remove the final default and actually put that in some of your pleadings. Until you do that, sir, I am not inclined to take in uh, your verbal request that additional issues be added to the trial management conference form, especially if they have not been fleshed out in discovery. Okay. Any other issues, sir? Yes. Um, the financial affidavits that they have are fraudulent. The most recent affidavits are... Uh, DM 60, uh, index 67 has a statement of uh, falsity. Uh, it says that um, that she, I only made... And Mr. Mr. Tangway, you filed pleadings requesting relief on those issues multiple times, and the court has already ruled on them. Is that correct? That is incorrect. Okay. So I'd like These to keep it... Correct. So what I'm saying is, Your Honor, and I'd like to be able to have an accurate record, um, DM 67, I told you on a previous pleading, which you denied, um, and there's still time for a motion to reconsideration, is that at the last hearing, she said, her attorney said that there was mo uh, multiple payments of varying amounts, yet on her financial affidavit, Index 67, it says that there is only one payment uh, that was made for $123 and uh, on 3-9. She also mentioned that in previous pleadings where she has um, said that I've made multiple payments. So she fraudulently put on that affidavit that, um, and she knew about it and the, and, and the attorney knew about it, um, that I only made one payment. And that has uh, swayed the court possibly uh, to discriminate against me, and it's false, and it's fraud. Um, additionally, she says that her parents, Lita well, Andre... Sir, I tell you what, this is not an evidentiary hearing, but you have the right to cross-examine the witness about the statements, sworn and unsworn, that she has made throughout this case, as long as it is relevant, sir. Okay. okay? I, would, uh, I, would, I, would I would like to do that now. That is an additional issue on the uh, trial management conference form. Uh, mm -hmm. You haven't properly pled it, and your pre-trial requests to make that a valid issue have already been ruled on and respectfully denied. Do you have any other issues that you want to make the court aware of that you will be arguing at the final hearing, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the domestic violence petition is fraud. There's fraud in the court. We cannot proceed according to rule. Sir, you've already alleged that, and you're in the process of appealing. Is there any update on the status of your appeal, sir? Uh, no. Yes, the, the, Your Honor, this is Attorney Ames. It was denied. Attorney Ames. Currently Attorney Ames. I'll hear from you. Yes. Attorney Ames. I'll hear from you in a moment, please. I want to give Mr. Tangway an opportunity to let me know what the status of it is, if you please. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I apologize. Go ahead, Mr. Tangway. So right now at the at the Supreme Court, they are currently notified of fraud. They're in a reconsideration period. They have not acted on that notification of fraud and uh, contempt. So I that is why one of the reasons we can't not go into trial, which I've made the court aware, and the court has not justified 
any legal grounds for the denial of my motion. My motions are legal. Right now there is an improper, illegal child support order on me and I'm held in contempt and default based on those orders and with federal rule 60, you cannot proceed. So we need to address these issues and before sir, we can proceed. What makes you think that the federal rules of civil procedure apply to this case in state family court, sir? Because federal rules are higher ranking unless the state has a more conclusive rule and they do not have a more conclusive law. I mean, excuse me, strike that. Uh, a more conclusive law. So it's in violation of the Constitution and also the law. And you, Your Honor, uh, with all due respect, RSA 490, I think it's D, dictates how the court is to rule. And then there's also, uh, which is fair, and that's law. And then the, also the court rules say that you can waive any rule unless... It is dictated by law. So then we have, uh, I believe it's 458C. Since the moving party, I am being effectively sued by Miss Andre. Since the moving party did not file a, uh, a child gu support guidelines worksheet, the orders are illegal. And I've told the court about this numerous times and the court has erred and it believe, I believe it's retaliatory and in light of the fraudulent domestic violence uh, orders. So the reason why we cannot move forward is because the federal rules of procedure trump the family court rules, which are Supreme Court rules, which are laws, unless there is a law that specifically prohibits or D dictates the way it's to work. So 458C says that Miss Andre must file or shall file, which shall means must, a parenting uh, a, a child guidelines worksheet and she has failed to do so and instead portrayed this fraud throughout all the way to the Supreme Court, which they have uh, jurisdiction over the the family matter. However, in Ruttenberg versus Munis, a New Hampshire Supreme Court case, the court's duty, is, the lower court's duty is to pass the collateral damage. And I have been attacking the collateral damage this entire time with my petitions. They are fraud. She knows it's fraud. The court has writing Mr. from Jay Ms. Ames. Clay, yes, let me sir. stop you right there. Yes, sir. Many of these arguments you've made before, and they were already ruled on at pretrial. At this point in time, there is a default entered against you. So your ability to file further pleadings and further pursue your legal arguments is substantially impaired. In uh, light of the fact that the uh, default, uh, uh, the uh, default judgment has been entered against you, and you haven't even, as far as I can discern, requested that the default be removed or answered appropriate discovery questions. I am not going to hear your arguments at this point in time. Okay, Your Honor. If you choose to file, hold on, sir. Yes, sir. If you choose to file for further relief between now and the trial, okay, the court will consider it at that time. But at this point, I am not going to put any further issues on the trial management conference form, okay? Okay, and Your Honor. we're going to move forward. Your Honor, I would like to state... Anything else that you want to add at this point? No, Your Honor, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor, if I may, I, I would like to state for the accurate record that my constitutional right, um, Article 3 of the New Hampshire Constitution, when men enter into a state of society, they surrender up some of their natural rights to that society in order to ensure the protection of others. And without such equivalent, the sure. surrender is void. Hold on, Mr. Tangway. If you want to make a complex, novel constitutional argument... I would ask that you seek legal advice about removing the final default and filing an appropriate legal memorandum clearly and uh, succinctly setting out the legal arguments that you were putting forth. But I am not going to take up time here at the trial management conference to entertain your complex legal and constitutional 
argument. Your, your okay. Honor, I disagree that it is complex. It's actually the quite most basic point of the law. I would also like to put sure. on the record, uh, Your Honor, I... Sure. I, I you, we are not going to entertain that argument at this time. There are and other issues, are. Your Honor, and you asked for all the issues that we have. So we also have the issues of contempt with the unfair orders, which are in violation of RSA 490, which you are not allowed to rule on. Uh, and, and, and sir, if you want to file to remove the default and file an appropriate pleading that you wish to have considered, you are free to do so. At this point in time, you are not going to advance any further issues or legal arguments that the court has already ruled on. This is a trial management conference. You, you, ha you have a hearing. Okay. Your and Honor, Your judge, Honor, you have you not ruled. You have not ruled. Final hearing excuse me, Your closed, Honor. Ex sir. Excuse you me, Your understand. Honor. Your Honor, excuse me. I, I don't understand because you're st still not letting me finish the issues. Sir, sir, you are correct. I am not going to let you finish at this point in time. Your arguments are not properly before the court, especially considering that a final default has been put in place. And here we are about a month before trial, and you haven't even asked to have the final default removed. Your Honor. In courtesy, you are here and able to advance some basic arguments and input into the trial management process, sir. But I would urge you to seek further legal advice as to what the effect of a final default is and the impaired ability for you to appear and present any further legal arguments at a final hearing in this matter if it proceeds on a default basis your okay? honor your honor you're we not are going to move forward with this trial management conference sir do you understand uh i understand that you are attempting to move forward with it however you have not allowed me to present all the issues that will be at the final hearing, which is not allowed to happen at this point in time sure. legally. Your arguments are heard and they are respectfully overruled. You're, you haven't heard, you have not heard all of my forward, arguments. Sir. Your Honor, you have not heard all of my arguments, sir. You are correct, sir. I have not. You are prohibited from advancing any further arguments at this trial management conference due to the final default and your inability to file appropriate pleading, sir. We are moving forward. Exhibits will be exchanged and pre-marked, and they'll be exchanged 15 days prior to trial, as indicated in the previous structure and conference form. I calculate that date to be August 21st. This case is scheduled for two days of trial, September 5th and September 12th, beginning at 9 a.m. The final discovery deadline in this case was previously set at April 30th, 2023. Final witness lists, exhibits, copies of exhibits, and final proposed orders shall be sent to one another by 8-21-23. Attorney Ames, is there anything else we need to do with regard to uh, trial management at this point in time? No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Tangway, you have the ability to have the last word, sir. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor. On April, on May 9th, you said that the trial would be on to, uh, spring of 2024. Then you changed that date. Why did you change that date? I didn't. I gave it to the clerk's office. They scheduled it as the docket allowed. I believe I asked for unavailable dates in either the fall of 2023 or spring of 2024. Maybe a case settled out and they were available to put this in on those two dates in September, sir. Anything further? Your, Your Honor, um, yes, there is. But at that point, you did not say that. I actually have the recording, if it, the court would please uh, allow me to play it. This is what you said. With regard to trial scheduling, um, if we're looking at a two-day trial, which seems to be right in the middle, right within the bounds of reasonableness, um, unfortunately, we'd probably be looking to early 2024. I would ask the parties to provide any unavailable dates 
for early 2024 to the clerk's office within 15 days. Okay, so you said that then, and then now we have the issue of time permitting um, we haven't been able to have a fair hearing. You have constantly ruled, and I have. We have before us uh, the motions for contempt. Miss Ames and uh, Eric Andre have filed five pleadings without an affidavit. Those pleadings were in response to that. She filed my complaint uh, or motion to find her in contempt showed the orders which the court has uh, put before them and showed the orders of contempt, I uh, uh, showed the orders that she must file an affidavit and then she filed a objection to that same motion without an affidavit, almost thumbing me that the fact that this court rules only in the favor of the petitioner plaintiff Miss Andre. So I asked the court to find them in contempt to make it a fair hearing. You have found me and put me into default without any legal basis, discriminatory and only me in fault. And also we have not had any interrogatories. She has not answered my interrogatories yet. The court has removed her conditional default without her stating, as the court put it, that I uh, have to say when I'm going to file the interrogatories. Further, you wrote on the paperwork that the interrogatories were due in 2022, almost a year prior to the hearing, which makes them unavailable. I've informed the court of all these matters and they're not being dealt with. And I asked the court to find her in the contempt for five counts and to order that she shows her legal fees. And then I am reciprocated those fees because it is of her fault that this trial is in no way fair. And she has constantly continued to, con to con put fraud not follow orders and not file paperwork properly, write dates improper, file things that are, are lies and fraudulent. So, Your Honor, as to the, the motion to contempt, can you please state the legal basis of your decision and can you please make a decision on that matter? Thank you, sir. First of all, uh, the clerk's office had informed me that they anticipated a two-day trial would not take place until the spring of 2024. And as I just said a few minutes ago, uh, maybe a case settled here or there and freed up some trial time, and that's why we ended up scheduling it in September. Purely ministerial and procedural, we had some days open up, and you guys were the next ones on the list. With regard to your motions for contempt, first of all, this is not a motion hearing. You have no properly filed pleadings that are currently pending before the court. And indeed, because of the final default that is in place, your ability to file pleadings is substantially impaired, sir. I would ask that you seek further legal advice as to what the effect of a final default is and how we are going to proceed on September 5th and September 12th if you do not file to have the final default against you removed. Your, your Honor, Your Honor, Honor if, I, if I may, if I may. Hold on, sir. Yes, sir. You asked me to address your questions, and I am doing so right now. I am not going to make an affirmative finding or ruling on your verbal motions right now. The way that the court has handled this was ruling on your motions in the past. You are not procedurally or substantively entitled to advance those arguments today. They have not been filed in writing. They are not properly before the court. That's incorrect, so Your the Honor. Court is rejecting your request to address those issues at this point in time, sir. That's incorrect, though, Your Honor. To for an accurate record, you have written in order to say that these motions will be heard, time permitting, and now there is time permitting, and I'm asking the court to use that. So, if you would like to write and 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 rerule on those or or rule on those 
and fully describe all matters of law, I would greatly appreciate that, but that is incorrect. Those motions are properly filed in front of you and you have given orders to hear them at this date and time. Why don't you give me the index numbers of those that you're referring to, sir? So if you look, um, I don't have the most... So if you just go down to the timeline, you'll see that it will be like something like index... 78 or 80 you'll see one of those I don't have the most accurate index um, but if you do in front of you I would be uh, of great appreciation if you could find those please sir 80 is the motion to convert trial management conference to telephonic hearing which was granted sir okay so then it would be either before or after uh, you have that information in front of you if you don't mind uh, if the court please look at those indexes and see that you have given orders on those and I will actually look at my finder in the meantime to save the court time if I can. Attorney Ames, do you know what motions Mr. Tangway is referring to? Uh, I believe there is one motion in which the court wrote that it would hear today if time was permitting. The other was respectfully denied. It was one of the motions for fraud or motion um, for contempt filed by him, I believe, sometime mid-July. Your Honor, uh, Index 83 is the plaintiff's objection. So I would believe that would be index 82 or 81. 83 is, is July 10th, her, her objection. Which is the Does orders is to be heard at the eight one twenty three trial management conference time permitting. And here we are. Sir, you've got a minute and a half to address this motion. I've already addressed it, Your Honor. Um and it's in it's in the writing. I've addressed it. She continues to file fi motions or objections that are not signed by affidavit. And there's good reason for that. And there's good reason for our constitutional rights. Um, so I'd like the court to look at that and in, in great detail, provide a fair hearing because I'm in default unfairly. And I've brought this to the attention of the court and it just seems like I'm getting treated poorly. I'd like to add though, at, at the emotional level, I want nothing more than to move on with my life. I cannot have a fair hearing without discovery. Discovery has not been made. Interrogatories have not been answered. I filed my interrogatories on time. There is a recording of you saying interrogatories are due by 315, 2023. I brought that to the court's attention in multiple motions. We need to, I need the court to treat me with respect. I've done, I was a great father and am a great father and I have not been able to see my children for almost a year because everything I do is threatened to be domestic violence and there was no domestic violence and there was no allegations of actual violence or sexual abuse and the allegations if you read them word for word what is written the, the findings of fact are impossible she knows that she does not have a sliding glass door she admitted in her writing uh, at attorney sure. Ames before the court, sir. If you're appealing the domestic violence case, this court has no jurisdiction to appeal uh, anything with regard to the domestic violence finding. You've got 15 seconds left, sir. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Rottenberg versus Miller. Uh, I'm sorry, Rottenberg versus Munnis says that the court can pass on collateral damage and has done so. 
And I would just like to say that if the court please look at me as a gentleman and look back at the f former rulings and the judicial notice made on the orders for the first hearing and you will see that you have dissuaded all my evidence and anything that I say is not valued at all or weighted in this court because of these false domestic violence. Okay, sir, I need to give Attorney Ames a minute to respond. Attorney Ames, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the pleadings that I believe he is referring to are procedural. So, for example, the motion to convert to a telephonic was not signed by the client because it was at my request. It was due to my vacation. Um, so it was back that related to me, and I signed the pleading. Um, so I am trying to be very clear and have her sign any pleading that the court that engage facts related to the parties, but if they are procedural in nature, um, or if they are related to facts as I need a request, Your Honor, then I am signing the pleading because that is me attesting to the fact that I'm on vacation this week and sitting in a parking lot in North Conway to take this, this call. So... Uh, I, I don't know what other violations he's referring to. He's repeatedly referenced that I don't have an appearance in this case. As was clearly outlined in my objection, I filed the petition and signed it as the attorney of record, and therefore a separate appearance is not required. Um, he believes that, it seems that he believes that I should not be able to file pleadings because I don't have an appearance. Uh, there's just multiple issues here. And again, I, I say he comes to the court with unclean hands. He has not answered discovery. He is not responding. He's in contempt. He's in default. Um, and so with respect to the discovery issues, to the extent that that's even relevant to these proceedings, which I don't think should be involved in this, he has unclean hands on the multiple issues that he is in contempt on, Your Honor. Okay. I will take the matter under advisement, and I will rule appropriately well before trial. I appreciate both parties staying on track during this trial management conference. You'll get the court's trial management conference order uh, and a brief order on motions um, in the mail, but I'd encourage the parties to seek further legal advice as to how we're going to proceed on the 5th and the 12th if the final default is still in place in this matter. With that, the hearing is concluded. I have to get to my 9 o'clock hearing. I uh, appreciate the parties giving me the tools that I need in order to make the best decision today. Thank, Thank you both. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to let everybody go. Thank you. The organizer has...